Hey guys, this is AI Everything, and today I'm going to show you how I protect my devices, my phone that I use every day, and my two iPads. Now, I decided to do this video because I realized that I have three iOS devices, but they could be Android, they could be Windows for that matter. It's This is basically platform agnostic as far as the idea of protection goes. But I realized I have three devices that I use on a regular basis and I protect all three of them very differently. I'm gonna start out right now and tell you that the way that I've chosen to protect my devices is not the way that affords the most protection. So if you're wondering how to make sure your devices don't break if you drop them, this video will not show you that. But it will show you some considerations that can be taken into account when you do decide how to protect different devices. And again, as a disclaimer, I must say, the way that I've chosen to protect my devices is not the way that does the most to protect them from breaking, okay? Basically, when you want to protect your devices, there will be some trade-offs. You can get an otter box or a life-proof case or any kind of so-called indestructible case, but you're going to be trading off things like usability. And for me, usability is a very important thing. I've alluded to in some of my videos that I have some health concerns, and those have led me down this path to how I've chosen to protect my devices, but at the same time, I still think that even everyday people are going to find some kind of use out of this. So, first I'm gonna show you the device that has the least amount of protection. And this is my iPad Air 2. My iPad Air 2 is something that I use mostly when I'm in the house. And all I've done is I've put a zag protector on the front and a zag protector on the back. Now the one on the back is just basically very, very thick film. It feels rubbery. And um, I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't feel that pleasing to touch for the first couple of months. It feels very rubbery and very strange. But going with this plan here, it keeps the device almost as thin as it is when it comes out of the box. Now, the only thing it's really going to protect is there's some minor protection on the front from the screen breaking. Very minor. Uh, decent protection for scratching. This is the glass. Zag makes clear film and then they make glass now. And this is the glass covering. This is kind of expensive. I'll talk to you more about prices in a little bit. Um, actually, this is a lot of money to barely protect it, if I'm honest. And there's no protection on the edges whatsoever. But the thing is, is I have arthritis and I have some other issues that makes it very difficult for me to use tablets. For a long time, I was using Samsung tablets to have the stylus. I was using the Note tablets to account for this. The iPad Air is the first tablet that's light enough and thin enough and then the way it's shaped and balanced in your hands it's the first full-size tablet that I can use comfortably if I'm honest. I was using an iPad mini before because the iPad Air, the first one, and the iPad 2, 3, and 4, and the original iPad of course, they were all a bit too thick and heavy for me. So what I decided to do was keep this as thin as it can possibly be. Now, I mainly use it when I'm in the house, so I don't really have too many concerns about dropping it. And then I even do the thing where I split my keyboard. So between the thinness and splitting my keyboard, it's actually very comfortable for me to type on. This is actually very comfortable for, whoa, for me to type on. So there you go. Um, this is the device that has the least amount of protection, my iPad Air 2. So, I'm going to put that back down, and then I'm going to show you the device that has the most protection, which is my iPad Mini. And this is still not a great deal of protection. This is almost no protection when it comes to dropping. This is a Logitech Folio. I forget what it's called exactly. I meant to look it up. It has a very specific name. It's something like the Logitech Slim Keyboard Folio or something like that for iPad Mini. I can put what it's called in the description. Now what I like about this is it still makes the camera available to use. There's a hole right there for the camera. And it actually, in my opinion, and again, all disclaimers here, 
the protection that I've chosen is not the protection that's going to keep things from breaking, but this is still the most protected device I have. So let me go into this. The full-size tablets were difficult for me to use, so I got an iPad mini. And the thing is, is the iPad mini is actually a little bit unwieldy to hold, believe it or not. It's, um, it's almost too small. So a case on the iPad mini helps, but then typing on it is a little bit difficult for me because of its size. So what I did was I went with this keyboard folio for a couple of reasons. One is the protection, one is the typing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the keyboard and then see it goes very fast. Oops put that down and then you can type on here. I have the camera set up in a weird position so I'm not going to actually like type type but I'll try. How about um, return return and uh, yeah I'm totally messing this up. You know why? Because the shift is over here and I'm standing sideways. I will mess this up is what I'm going to do. Will try to type during, you know what, this is a complete failure. I'll, I'll do a separate standalone video sometime when I'm actually sitting here properly and the camera's crooked instead of me being crooked because this is pretty low and I'm pretty high and yeah. But normally this is okay to type on. It's an iPad mini so the keyboard is a little bit cramped. The shift button is kind of, that's not the hard one to get to. What it, what's hard for me to get to is the apostrophe. Apparently I use a lot of contractions when I type and sometimes I mess up the apostrophe. But overall, um, I type pretty well on this. I actually don't do, do too badly. I've typed a bunch of blog posts on it. And the reason I went with this for the iPad mini is this is what I use if I go somewhere and I cannot take a laptop, all right? And the way this folds, uh, it's pretty over well protective. You can, let's say you go somewhere and you want to put this under your car seat when you park somewhere if you don't take it in with you, or even if you do take it in with you, you can just lay it down. You can just treat it almost like a book. You can just lay it down any way that you want to, and you don't have to worry about scuffing it or scratching it, anything like that. And then even, and again, disclaimer here, please do not think at all that this is super great protection because it's not super great protection, okay? But one of the reasons I got this is if I'm at a meeting or I'm somewhere out in public with people, a lot of times you're going to be eating or drinking or whatever, and if you spill, because this is some kind of like rubberized vinyl deal right here, so if you spill a little bit of liquid on here and wipe it off fast enough, it very likely will not impact your iPad. So that's pretty cool. Now, another neat thing is if you're going to do a presentation, not necessarily a presentation, but again, you're, you're at a meeting, you're eating with somebody, you're sitting at a table with them. That's one of the problems with it right there, and I will be talking about that in a second. I was gonna to get to that. So let's say you're sitting with somebody and you wanna show them something, whether it's a PowerPoint or it's a web design or whatever you're gonna show them, you can prop it up here, it stands up really well. It's magnetic, there's a magnet in this keyboard um, stand, and so it very quickly, magnetizes into place very quickly unmagnetizes this is again when i choose cases for my devices usability is at the forefront for me it's it's honestly why i'm choosing a device one over another it, it just that's how it's been the last few years so one of the problems with this is the ipad is only held in here I mean, it's barely held in here. It clips in here and it clips in here and it's barely held in. If you drop this the right way, the iPad's gonna careen out of the case and it's not gonna be good. So that is how I protect my iPad mini. Now, somewhere in between, and eh, hold on, sorry about that. Somewhere in between the two, so the least protection and the most protection, somewhere in between the two is my phone. And if you notice, it's up on a kickstand right now. So you can watch video on it. And I have all three of these set to my YouTube channel because if you want to show video in a video, you have to worry about things like copyright. I can't necessarily show Guardians of the Galaxy or the Avengers Age of Ultron or anything like that in my videos because then possibly I could be hit with copyright infringement. So. 
these are my videos on uh, my channel, AI Politics 2, in case you didn't know. All right, so as you can see, it's standing up there on a the kickstand on its hey guys, own. This is AI everything. It's Ooh, everything. there we go. And then obviously that one's standing up there too, but I don't want all the videos being distracting. So let's pick this up. All right, so this is my Incipio case. All right, I like this case very much. Really, really like this case. This is, again, I'm going to have to put it in the, um, can you, can I make it say Incipio? I'm standing crooked from the camera. All right, so this is an Incipio case. I think it's called the Stowaway for the iPhone 6 Plus. My daily driver is an iPhone 6 Plus, and since using the 6 Plus, I do find myself using the Mini less and less. This is the blue case. I had the black one for a while, and then I had problems with the black one. Again, I'm not showing you the longest lasting cases. I'm not showing you the most durable cases, the ones that are gonna protect it, but I am showing you usability. So I'll tell you why I went with this case. First of all, I wanted a wallet case, if you will. I wanted a case that could hold credit cards and driver's license, your driver's license, credit cards, things of that nature. This will hold your driver's license plus two cards, okay? So a debit card, a credit card, a driver's license. Two different debit cards, a driver's license. Um, a your Costco or Sam's Club membership, your debit card, your driver's license. They're all in here. Now this door closes really well. It doesn't seem to want to fly open, but what can happen is sometimes the spine here can wear away. And I think it might've been user error or it might have been the case, I don't know why, but the black one, the spine started to weaken, and I was afraid like it was gonna break off, so I got another one. I got this blue one. And I think the blue and the white actually look really nice together. So anyway, here, let me lock the screen rotation so that's not being annoying. So the thing I like about this case for my 6 Plus, and the, again, sorry, I am standing here cockeyed from the camera doing this. Um, the thing that I like about this case for the 6 Plus is it feels really good in the hand. I can still use it one-handed. So I'm gonna type a little bit here. I can still use. I don't advise this because you can drop the 6 Plus, but I can still use it one-handed. I'm not gonna stand here and type the whole sentence. Uh, I'll be too awkward doing it. But sometimes you're pushing the grocery cart, somebody texts you, and you want to fire something off real quick. I started doing voice texting lately, but I can still use this one-handed a little bit if I need to, although I do have kind of decent sized hands. They're not huge, but they're not small either. So anyway, this case is very usable. Now I knew I wanted a wallet case, so let me get back to that. I knew I wanted a wallet case, but I didn't want the kind that like folds open like a wallet. And the number one reason why is because I have children and I like taking pictures and videos of them and saving those memories. And the thing about kids is if they're doing something cute or doing something really interesting, like they're doing cartwheels or something, you only have moments to take that picture, right? So there's nothing to obstruct the camera. But there's still a good amount of protection. This is very thick. This does add a certain amount of thickness to the case. So this has pretty good shock protection, I feel, and it does have decent drop protection. It has as good of drop protection as any kind of shell type case. It has uh, good cutaways here. I've never had trouble getting headphones into this. Again, sorry, I'm standing cockeyed. I promise I, I would think the way that I'm holding it should work, but then I look in the monitor and I'm crooked and I do apologize. See, I'm holding this diagonally and you know what? Let us move on. So I've never had trouble getting anything into the microphone jack. I've never had trouble charging it. The speakers are, you know, there's no obstruction of the speakers or the microphone for when you're using speakerphone. And it just is very good for functionality. So the thing is, and there's the drop test that I totally planned. Totally planned that drop test. No, I did not. All right, so the thing is, it's fine. It landed on the rubber shell. If it did land on the glass, um, I forgot to mention I do have the um, I do have the Zag 
glass protector on the front. I do have that. So, yeah. No, it's got good shock protection, decent drop protection. Again, for liability reasons, I don't want to try to say that any of these cases are going to really do a great job as far as protecting your device if you drop it. Okay, I'm not trying to go there. I'm just trying to show you some cases that add good usability. Because usability should be as, Im as important as protection. So let me go ahead and flush that idea out for you a little bit. I know I talked about the phone for a long time, but so the phone has the glass on the front by Zag. It's like a plastic glass, because I've, I've actually played with it. It feels like plastic glass, like plexiglass even, but they call it glass. So if you go buy it, it's the glass uh, from Zag. Now the thing is, is um, I have the glass, I have the Incipio stowaway case, but then I also have Apple's protection, which is called Apple Care Plus, I believe. And the bottom line is Apple Care Plus, I actually have a Samsung Galaxy S, and compared to what I can get to protect that, Apple Care Plus is totally the way to go. Um, if you want to talk about a good value, so Apple Care Plus is not that I'm trying to sell it to you, but just so you know, like again, I care about usability, I care about having my card and my driver's license, I care about using my camera, I care about how it feels in my hand, but if I break it, I would like to not be out six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars, however much a six plus costs. You know, the cheapest six plus probably costs seven or eight hundred dollars, probably about seven fifty. Anyway, I don't want to be out that amount of money. So I do have Apple Care Plus. I think it's $79. Okay, so I looked up Apple Care Plus. It is $99 that you pay for Apple Care Plus around the time that you buy your phone. You have 60 days to buy it. But around the time that you buy your phone, you pay the $99. If you break your phone, i.e. when I dropped it earlier, then that would be $79 for the deductible to replace it. You can only replace it two times. So hopefully you are not in the habit of breaking your phone. So again, what I go with is a simple shell case with good shock protection, no obstruction of my camera, holds a driver's license and two credit cards, and then I have the glass on the front, and hopefully this is good enough to get me through the life of the phone, but if it's not, I also have Apple Care Plus. Now the reason why I went to such lengths for my phone is because I have my phone on me every single day. You know, I might be in downtown LA trying to find my way around. I might trip and drop the phone. I might be anywhere. I might be at the store looking at my shopping list on my phone with one hand, pushing the cart with the other. I might drop the phone. Somebody might bump me. I might drop the phone. There's a pattern here. I'm The phone is the most likely thing out of everything on here to get damaged because I have the phone out the most often. If I'm out in the snow, snow is probably going to get on this phone. And again, you can get a life proof case, you can get an otter box case, and those are perfectly fine. Everybody has their own needs for protection. But I went with usability. And that's the point, is I am showing you that I have these three devices. They're all iOS devices, they're all Apple. One is the full-size tablet, one is the mini tablet, one is the phone, and I protected all three differently. And again, if you want to get the most protection, you definitely need to watch a different video or you need to do some different research. But it would not be any of these things here that I chose. Now just one more thing, I, I did choose the ZAG for protection, Z-A-G-G. -G. Z as in Z, Z-A-G-G. -G. I went with ZAG because a lot of malls, most malls that I've been to have kiosks in them uh, that sell the Zag products. They're actually Zag kiosks. And the thing is, is let's say, and I've actually had this happen, um, let's say you get a crack in this because it's glass, it's not film, or even if you have the film, let's say for whatever reason there's like a little indention in the film, which I've had happen on phones before, for $6 they will replace your screen protector. Now, one cool thing about Zag is when I went to get my screen protector replaced on this phone for the first time, they did not have my screen protector in stock and they actually gave me the, uh, the most expensive one they had because they didn't want me to leave unsatisfied. They didn't want me to leave 
with a cracked screen protector or an indention in my screen protector. So again, instead of choosing the bulletproof case, the dustproof case, the waterproof case, I chose options that grant me enhanced usability of my products, but I still gave myself some insurance. I, I got the screen protector that's easy to have a professional replace at a reasonable rate. I got the coverage plan, the insurance, that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and gives me pretty good peace of mind. Now, I did not get any kind of insurance on on my full-size tablet, and the thing is I don't take it out of the house very often. I have sometimes, but when I do, I treat this just like my laptop, okay? The same things I do for my laptop, I do for this. So I have a laptop bag, this goes in the laptop bag. I have a laptop backpack, this goes in the laptop backpack. So this has the least protection out of any of my devices, but I also subject it to the least amount of chances to ruin it. I don't walk around willy-nilly with this guy. Now, again, this one right here, uh, I don't have the warranty on this, and I don't even have the glass on this, but I do have the keyboard folio, which offers a decent amount of protection, and again, I treat this like a laptop. I treat the tablets like laptops, whereas if I had them in bulletproof cases, I could probably fling them around a little bit, you know, even like toss them into the seat of my car or something like that and not really have to worry about it. So, again, the purpose of these videos was not to say, hey, this is the best way to keep your device from breaking, but just to give you some insight and maybe some ideas of how to preserve usability. Because, because to me, usability is a key feature of these devices. They're not just portable. Laptops are portable, but one of the things that sells devices like these is the fact that they're supposed to be easily usable. And I've noticed if you have cumbersome cases on your phone, and that's something you have to use every day of your life, in and out of your pocket, in and out of your purse. If you have a cumbersome case on the phone, sometimes it's not easy to tap on certain things. Or I've noticed like when you're typing and you have the thicker cases and the thicker ridges on the front and it's got like the thing covering the screen, you have to open your hands more to type, if that makes sense. And for me, Again, I have arthritis, so for me that becomes an issue. That affects my usability. So, so again, this is how I've chosen to protect my devices, and I made usability one of my priorities. But why don't you let me know in the comments how you protect your devices and what priorities you have when it comes to that. Because most people I know, personally, they either go with just a normal shell case or they go all out with the life-proof case or the OtterBox case. You know, the kind of cases that say you can run over them with a car and your phone will survive. So let me know in the comments, and hopefully this video has helped you guys. This has been AI Everything, and thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the love and support that you guys have shown my channel very much. Thank you again, and have a good day.